What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm at a pond I've not been at for a while. As you can tell, fall is in full swing here in Ohio. But today, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips. I'm just literally straight up fishing today. No challenges, no nothing. I'm just going to try and catch some fish for you guys. And I'm going to help you guys. I'm going to try and give you some tips to help you catch fish when those bass are just about to shut off. Like at night, it's getting down into the 30s. In the day, it's 40s and 50s. And this time of year is when those bass are just about to shut off. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to catch the fish in that time of year. Let's go. Alright guys, well, I'm going to move ponds to where I caught fish yesterday. During my MTB slam. And if you guys watched that video, which you go, sh you should go do that. Uh, sorry, I got distracted by carp. You should go do that because I talked about how there's a new pond I haven't tried out that I know how to get to. And it looks like it might be pretty juicy. So, we're going to stop at the pond I was at yesterday. Make a couple casts, go to the pond where they found the dead guy. And then we're going to go try a new pond. So, you got to stay tuned. Sightfish, son. Alright, guys, well, I sightfished this little dinker dinker right off that rock out there. I told you guys I saw him when I first came around and knew I was going to get him when I came around the second time. We're going to put Smurf Smurf back in the water here and see if there's any more before we head out to our final couple ponds here. His mouth is, I know you guys can't really see him down inside there because the shadows but this guy's been eating on the bottom a little bit it looks like he's literally bleeding it's so red let's get a cool cool, cool a cool slow-mo cold water clear water release You guys know it is deadly to jerk baits because I've lost like three of those here trying to catch fish. I just saw a fish in that it's either off or on. So we're either going to catch a ton of fish here or we're not. So stay tuned, I guess. And they took the fountain out. So I kind of wish I could have came here and got my jerk bait back, which would have been kind of cool. But I guess they don't want you to do that. Since there's no fountain here and string crossing, I'm gonna try this upper pond first, but stay tuned. My GoPro literally just died. But when you hear about people talking about how in fall fish are getting stocky, they're feeding up, this is what they mean. This is a half a pound fish that's probably close to a pound right now because look how stocky this fish is. You guys probably can't tell, but he's full of tiny little minnows. He was up there eaten by that culvert, and I spooked him. He's full of those minnows, ready to eat, or ready to have in his stomach all winter. That's what they mean by this. He's actually got some scars on him back there from birds or something. I don't know. We're going to get him back in the water. Not a bad fish at all. Let's get a picture for the gram. There we go. That was supposed to be cinematic. There. Let me help you out here, big guy. There we go. Dude. Let me let go. Yeah. Be free. Oh my 
So, editing this, and I realized that I downloaded the wrong GoPro footage and deleted the right one. But basically, I saw this giant wake, and I took a lap around the pond, and I figured it out. They're biting bluegill. Or, well, not they're not biting bluegill, but there's a lot of bluegill in the pond. So, I'll talk about this later, about how I switched up my bait to catch this fish. But basically, I knew that I was going to go back to that culvert before I left, because I know that those bass were going to come back, and there was like three of them and one that made that giant wake. So I went back to that culvert and I caught this fish. It was insane, it bit right by the bank and I had to give it some line and let it swim out before I could actually set the hook. And then when I tried to boat flip it up onto the land, it got stuck in a tree, so I had to try and take it out of the tree. I'm kind of upset, well not kind of, but I'm really upset that I didn't get the GoPro footage, but here's me talking about it. Of this fish. This is a three pound fish, close to three pound fish. Look at that stomach. That's insane. Oh my god. Oh. That's the fish I spooked off that branch for sure. Oh my god, it feels so good to catch a, such an awesome fish. Oh, that was so, so good. I came down here because I didn't want to get yelled at by that lady. We're gonna get this ginormous little fish back in the water. Here she goes. Awesome. So, I caught that fish on a half ounce Sasquatch Chicks football head and bluegill collar. Now, there's a reason I chose this bait. If you guys. So I knew that fish was there because I saw that giant wake on my first lap. I thought it was like a five pounder. Be turns out it was just a really, really, really fat fish. And then over there, over there, not by the culvert, over there. Over there, I saw that there were tons of little sunfish. So I switched it up from the jerk bait to a more slower sunfish style bait. Now I have the catch co wrecking craw on the back which has floating craws so it sits like that which i don't know if it helped or not but i was just hopping it and i saw that he hit it and he was really close he was right on the other side of those tree branches if you guys couldn't tell which you know and then i set the hook and i had to get him out from the tree branches but i gave him a little bit of time and i gave him time to eat it and then i set the hook which is important because there's something called short lining where if a bass hits you, you know, right at the bank on like a bait that you really have to swing into, like a frog or something, there's no way you're going to catch that fish. It's either going to break your rod or it's going to break your line because your rod has to have time to load up and so, so does your line. You can't just bam and have the tension so great because it's right at your feet. You have to give it time and let it swim with it for a little bit. And that's what I did. I gave it like five seconds to swim with it. And then I yanked the hook really hard into that fish's mouth. And that is going to do it for this video. So, hope you guys learned something from my tips towards the beginning. If you enjoyed, definitely leave a giant thumbs up. Go click the subscribe button. Helps me out a ton. I don't know if it's over there or something. Might be over there. But it helps me out a ton. Click the little bell so you know when I upload. I'm going to try and do more of these educational videos and stuff like, you know, spooling up a bait caster, spooling up a spinning rod or something like that, or frog fishing for noobs or something stupid like that. But let me know if you guys like this type of video. Just me going out and fishing and trying to help you guys, give you some tactics to use on the water. But if you enjoyed, like I said, leave a video, click the subscribe button. I'm your host, Owen. We will catch you guys on the next one. See ya!